Have you ever wanted to draw but felt pressured to be good enough or have the perfect sketchbook page? Well, <laughs> welcome to the club. In this chill, laid back sketchbook session, we are going to be chatting about being real with ourselves and our art and falling in love with creating again. There are so many aesthetic sketchbook pages out there on the internet and stuff and I feel like you want to do that and you want to give that a try but at the same time when you look at the blank page um, and you're just like oh my gosh how am I going to do that um, and also I guess you feel pressured because um, especially when you show your art to other people or like you're you tell people you do art as a hobby and whenever someone's like oh can I take a look in your sketchbook you're like uh-huh <laughs> you know and yeah showing unfinished sketches and um, um, and just like bad ones too um, is actually kind of it's pretty raw you know it's like not um, not make not like hidden or like dressed up in a way it is what it is and sometimes you sh you got to give yourself some room to make bad art so that you your art can be good because how can you make something good if you've never took the leap to give it a try you know and just try over and over again and what if if you gave yourself that room you were you would discover something that you didn't know you enjoyed you know on a scale of 1 to 10 how confident would you say you are in your strokes when you draw like 1 to 10 <laughs> no fives fives not allowed so what would you say like can you just draw something and be like, oh, no problem, you know? I don't need the eraser. Or are you like, yeah, I kind of erase every two seconds. Well, I'd give myself a six. Um, I mean, kind of, it's, that's kind of the point where you're like, you're kind of confident, but you're not, and you're like getting there, you know? Like, sort of confident, but not really. And you still use your eraser. You know, but I wonder what would happen if, like, you didn't, you drew with pen. Like, you know how there are, like, artists that draw with pen? I mean, I admire those people so much that, like, it looks so good and they don't use erase, you know? Do you think you you would just get more accurate over time? It's kind of like being, it's it's being comfortable, I guess, with those glaring mistakes. It's like all or nothing on the first try. Yeah, w wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that be fun? Why don't we try something? I was thinking of just doing a video of and drawing like every day um, for say however long, you know, I feel I mastered it. Um, like I did with a 100 heads challenge, not 100 heads challenge, but I drew a nose every day for like 14 days, I think it was, until I got tired of it um, because I had trouble drawing noses. And when you have trouble with something, why not just, you know, throw yourself into it and master it, right? <laughs> so yeah, I have a video on that. And I thought, and also one where I do faces that way. And I was thinking, what if we did a video that was like drawing with pen for like 30 days straight, no eraser, no nothing. What would that be? Wouldn't that be cool? Do you think we should do that? Write me a comment, okay? That'd be so much fun. I feel like I have a good feeling about that. But, you know, you're always afraid to kind of do something like that and just, I don't know. I never really got around to doing it. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to embark on together. <laughs> if you have any ideas at all, any video ideas, um, I mean, I'm always open to suggestions. So whatever you want to see, let me know and we'll see if that works out maybe maybe not but yeah i'd love to know i personally am always editing what i do i guess it comes from you know this i feel inability to say things straight away right i guess from the first time i don't know and <laughs> i'm trying you know, I feel like so much has is being filtered these days, you know, just on a subconscious level, 
when you talk, you kind of think a thousand times before you say something. Um, when you draw, you also think, I guess, overthinking um, just what you're going, what you're going to paint, what you're going to do. You know, every single stroke, you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. Um, you know, and I think I just sometimes you just gotta be loose and give it to yourself. You know those moments of just what if what would happen if you didn't put a filter you know what would happen then maybe we would all be a bit more i guess authentic i think i should find give myself a reference photo or something to work off of because e i don't know what i'm doing anyway i was so ashamed at just my inability to talk on camera and draw at the same time so i completely just yeeted whatever i drew on the other page and just started again with drawing some guys I'm trying to figure out it's kind of looking upwards so yeah You see what I mean? Your art doesn't have to be and shouldn't be up to standards all the time, whatever your standards may be. And having it be more of an expression of what you're feeling in the moment seems just so much more, I don't know, real to me, raw and vulnerable and just being okay with being vulnerable and sharing that or keeping it to yourself if that's what you feel but i think what's so amazing about creating is how you can bring things into existence like i was at pottery just a couple hours ago and it was kind of mind-boggling how i just took a piece of clay and i made a bowl out of it and it was just I don't know, like, before this bowl did not exist, right? And when you think about it, a bowl that I made, that particular bowl will not never exist ever again. Like, the exact same. And, I mean, that's mind-boggling, you know? Like, it doesn't matter what you create. It doesn't matter what you draw. It could just be a squiggle, and you brought something into existence. And I think that's just so special, and that's really why I love creating, why I think so many of us kind of, I think humans have this, like, inner, inner, um, inner, like, striving? I don't know, like, they just, this inner need to create. Not all, I mean, I think some people have it more strongly than others, but, you know, that's incredible. Being more open-minded um, on just the opportunities of the universe and just how big it is, um, is is like something I'm kind of standing up against at the moment. Um, trying a new medium, um, a new art style, or just just testing something out in general is just, you know, let yourself do it, okay? You deserve it. At this point, I'm pretty new at content creating, so I'm still figuring out the algorithm. I think the coolest thing though is seeing yourself grow over time and kind of documenting that process is just like incredible, you know, um, in, in really anything essentially. The thing with the algorithm, and if you're a content creator yourself, um, you'll personally relate to this um is it's the algorithm is a lot of trial and error um you kind of it's it's really a, a game of just what's gonna happen let's see you know like you can't you can't really predict um and once you figure out i guess i hope a sort of blueprint then things will become easier but because i'm new i don't have that yet so it's important to experiment with you know different types of formatting of videos and kind of content i guess in your niche so 
This video is one of those experiments. I'm trying out a more longer, longer podcast sort of video. Um, and so let me know if you like this, give it a like, comment, so, you know, I get, I get an idea, right? It really helps so much. What is the main thing you're struggling with um, in your art? Um, is it a facial feature or just an angle, anatomy? Um, for me, it was always, well not always, but it's this angle currently, this upturned side turned face angle gets me every time. Um, yeah, before it was the planes of the face and understanding where the facial features even go, but after watching tutorials, you'll get the hang of it. If you ever have trouble drawing planes of the face, there's this really, really cool video. Like, there's so much material out there on YouTube. You know, type it in the search bar, you'll find it. That's what I love about YouTube. You know, just everyone's helping each other out. And I mean, it's great. I taught myself a lot of things off of YouTube. Um, I taught myself how to play ukulele, guitar, piano <laughs> so yeah do you have any other passions other than art or if, if you're not drawing right now or if you don't draw um what are your passions um for me i also music has also a place in my heart along with art um yeah drawing the hair on this guy was just so much fun i was trying to be more expressive and even though he had curly hair um, with curly hair, even though it's complicated to draw and stuff, I feel I think that like with a couple um, just squiggles here and there, like put in the right spot, um, you can get the illusion that all his hair is curly and like like the depth of curly hair. I mean, if you're going for a more sketchy effect, that works. Um, as I was in with this head. Just a question, um, how do you prefer to find references if you use them at all? Um, I found, I think a lot of times um, people say Pinterest is like a huge, is pretty popular, um, but I've, you, I recently started um, um, look, using Pinterest and testing it out, and you know, like with everything, um, learning a new... Um, a new platform is always kind of like, uh, <laughs> and so yeah, I got Pinterest, so it's Adar Frida if you want to check it out. I just have like, it's so disorganized. I'm still figuring out how to make folders and like how to organize things and it just like randomly puts things in other folders. I don't know, but if you want to take a look at what inspires me and the reference photos I'm using for, maybe you'll use them for your own art, check me out on Pinterest, um, Adar Frida, I think I'll leave it in the description if I remember to do so, <laughs> and yeah, my Instagram and TikTok are also down there if you want to check that out. So if you're watching this video and sketching along with me, when was when did you start um doing art when did you start drawing so for me um i've been doing art as ever since i can remember i was one of those child fanatics over art and i have so many funny stories um and one of them is um from back when i was two years old <laughs> so um my my parents house um the kitchen has these huge windows um, facing the yard and it's like, you know, with the sliding door, like that sort of sunroom vibes. Um, and so, like I was saying before, um, one day, um, my mom, this is when I was two years old, my mom walks into the kitchen and um, she sees a ton of um, marker scribbles all over the all over the windows the doors it's just i mean i guess beautiful stuff you know like <laughs> a lot very colorful um and and then it's just me in the center of it all and i'm just like hi mama do you like it <laughs> it's so nice and then she's like no imagine yourself in this position i mean back then that was like right after we they did renovations at that time and I mean just imagine yourself 
um, walking into that room uh, and just having a mini heart attack because I mean, who's going to wash that off the windows, you know? Uh, and I mean, I credit my mom for this, um, for being very calm in that situation. Um, and so she was like, yeah, very nice. <laughs> and then she kicked me out of there and just washed it off the windows. And so actually, after that, she told me that she found out that... Um, washable markers wash off really well off of windows so after that incident i always got to draw on the windows and the doors like as a activity <laughs> so yeah that was my earliest um i guess i could say earliest um when i started painting so like the earliest time i painted i mean drew sorry did art okay uh and and then I just, I guess, continued it. It was it was just a huge part of my, I guess, childhood identity. Like, I was drawing all the time. Um, but then I feel like with hobbies, eventually, like, you get tired of them or you drop them for one reason or other. And around, I'd say, when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old, um, I wasn't drawing at all. I just kind of, you know, things take over your life and you're kind of your um i guess the importance of things kind of switch around for you and friends are more important or just anything really and um yeah so i dropped it and then and then two or three years ago when pandemic came along i can't believe it's already like it's a while you know like it's already behind us but anyway <laughs> uh when pandemic came along um I guess I had this personal crisis, I guess, when you stay at home after being around with just like kind of chasing so many things at one at one time, you when you finally get a chance to kind of stop, even if it's forcefully, <laughs> um, I guess you kind of reevaluate where you are in life and where you want to go and kind of adjust, readjust your direction. Um, and that's what pandemic was for me so I really did not know who I was I think you know you I, I don't know how to even explain this just you when you're chasing I guess someone else's ideal or just societal norms of what is good or at least what you think um what you you feel that that is influencing you as i mean i felt that was influencing me a lot just friends group um you know there's a lot of um things that influence you and when you get a moment to kind of stop you suddenly realize maybe that that wasn't what you wanted and you're kind of confused because it's something you've been doing for a while and but you know you don't want it but at the same time um you don't know what you do want you know so that's kind of the situation I was in um and I really was trying to find out um just my like who I am um based on what I want and not what other people want for me you know like are your opinions what you really think or what someone else told you to think are you doing something because you think it's right or you like it or because somebody else likes it you know so um one of the things I turned to was I looked back on what I liked in my childhood and what I just normally gravitated towards and um and it was art it was drawing and so i finally picked it up again after so many years and really i feel like that's that's your turning point when you kind of come back to what you like and you just remember just how much you liked it and why you liked it in the first place and so i have to thank art and yeah for just you know bringing me where i am now whenever you feel like um you're just going too fast and are in like a circular motion of just repeating your mistakes repeating um and just feeling overwhelmed i think that's that's a sign that um slowing down 
should be a priority at least for a couple hours maybe a day maybe three days maybe a month like you know take as however long you feel um is good for you um and just that's what i why um i haven't done a sketchbook session in so long was just like i guess i was like um you know you feel like you don't have enough time or whatever to just sit for two hours straight and draw or paint or whatever uh, and um and like i kind of at that moment you know when you feel like things are just tumbling on you and you've got like like you can't really see where i don't know you can't see just the way out you feel discouraged and um yeah overwhelmed <laughs> and taking a break really just when you put so much pressure on yourself and your hobbies and i mean it stops becoming fun and sometimes you just gotta take a pause take a break and remember why you started in the first place taking a break is underrated honestly for me personally i found that um yeah and so just taking a ditch i guess for like two hours and not being guilt guilt like not feeling guilt tripped like not guilt tripping yourself you know being being like oh uh you got so much to do why are you wasting time like no self-care is not wasting time it's not a waste of time um and yeah so this sketchbook session like right now was just one of those i need to take a chill pill moments <laughs> and you know, you feel glad, you feel refreshed after that. Maybe you don't. Like, I guess you feel slightly like, oh my gosh, I actually, that stuff is not, that I need to do is not going to do itself. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I think, you know, it's worth it. Something I found that really contributed... <laughs> Sorry, that came out weird. Uh, something I found that really contributes um, to your creativity and kind of gets you out of helps to get you out of that creative um, ditch or rut or whatever you want to call it if you're in one of those um, is actually just cleaning up your space. I know that sounds pretty simple and like disclaimer I'm I'm like I'm not the most by nature I'm not the most organized person in the universe. Um, as a kid my stuff was I was like that person the kid whose stuff was just everywhere you know but over time I've come to appreciate that like clean space means clean mind you know what i mean um recently i posted a short of just a clip of me cleaning up my desk space after painting and someone in the comments said that um basically that um after painting um cleaning up after painting always you know gives you a good mood and like inspires new creativity and i wholly um agree with that honestly i've come to um learn that um yeah clean space is clean mind can i ask you for a favor could you please comment on this video um it doesn't even have to be anything crazy just like a thumbs up or something because every time someone comments on a video the youtube algorithm goes crazy and yeah if you could do that that'd be so so appreciated also, I wish I could show you a clip of just the end result, but I lost my sketchbook and I did not film it. So unfortunately, this is where we have to leave off. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.